as I got here and sat down, I found out <laughs> I've got a gaping hole in my side. Welcome back to Ever Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Cars. Cars is a 2006 animated theatrical release about a hotshot race car who learns the meaning of friendship when he's stranded in a town off Route 66. It is directed by John Lester and Joe Ramped, cinematography by John Claude Kalash, supervising animating done by Scott Clark and Doug Sweetland, editing by Ken Schretzman, music by Randy Newman, and it's written by Dan Fogelman, John Lasseter, Joe Ramped, Kiel Murray, Phil Lauren, and Jordan Klubine. Klubine. The film stars Owen Wilson as Lightning McQueen, Bonnie Hunt as Sally, Paul Newman as Doc, and Larry the Cable Guy as Mater. This was the last film to be independently produced by Pixar before the big Disney purchase of Pixar, and development began in 1998, soon after A Bug's Life, but was later, oh, it was supposed to be about a yellow uh, electric car in a gas-guzzling world, but it was later scrapped uh, for Toy Story 2, but then it was resumed with major script changes after a cross-country road trip Lassiter decided to call a Route 66 historian, and that historian took Lassiter and 11 animators in rented white Cadillacs on two road trips across the historic Route 66. And then the working title for the film became Route 66 with bigger roles for Mater and Doc and some others. And then they changed the name from Route 66 just to Cars because they didn't want to be confused with the TV series. And then the number on Lightning was changed from 57, which was Lassiter's birth year, to 95, the year Toy Story came out. And then Klubine said this was his most like bitter and wonderful experience because he was fired soon before the premiere of the film. Um, and he feels that John Lasseter wrote him out of how the film kind of came to be. Animators studied cars and how they were made at the J Maze of the Ford Motor Company. Um, they really worked to make sure the cars moved believably. They didn't want the cars to be like seem mushy or clay-like. They wanted them to seem like they were of a hard substance. Um, and from the beginning, John Lasseter wanted their eyes to be their windshields instead of their headlights, like a lot of um, animation in the past. And the reason for that is because he thought the headlights as eyes made the cars seem more snake-like where the windshield as eyes made them seem more human-like, which I thought was really interesting take on it. Um, and then they were determined to be true to the materials, like I kind of mentioned. Um, and they, um, creating the chrome and paint and shading was the hardest part of the process. The film had a $120 million budget and made $462 million in the box office, which is very good. It's got a 74% on Rotten Tomatoes, which the consensus reads, Cars offers visual treats that more than compensate for its somewhat thinly written story, adding up to a satisfying diversion for younger viewers, which isn't terrible. It was nominated for Best Animated Feature, but lost to Happy Feet, and it has a lot of video game appearances and fun times. Marco Aurelio Canonico, I apologize for the pronunciation, said The Little Cars, um, which was a Brazilian computer graphics film, series seemed similar and a lawsuit was floated, but a lot more people said the film was similar to Doc Hollywood and thought it was plagiarized, but nothing really came of that. Cars 2 and 3 followed this, which I've heard good things about, but I've never seen, so I'm excited to get to those when I do. And then the spin-off series uh, films, Planes and Planes Fire and Rescue, also kind of spinned off of this. And then there are also Cars Tunes and Cars on the Road, which are both on Disney Plus, I think. Animation is absolutely stunning. I think a lot of people would agree that it is beautiful, especially for 2006, especially after I've just watched The Wild. This, like, it just blows it out of the water. I think the night lighting especially, especially with the neon old school lighting in Radiator Springs is so stunning. I really loved seeing the different times of day um, portrayed in this film because it really gives you that like bright desert sun that just makes everything so like blanketed, pale, just glaring in the sun. And then you get like beautiful neon or beautiful inside um, lightning's trailer, night lighting. It's just so stunning. 
I think the opening is very effective with like the black screen and lightning talking to himself before he like whips out to do the race. And I love that with the edit, they have that entire thing circle back to the end when he's trying to do that for himself as well. Um, I just really liked that full circle moment of the editing. Uh, and I thought, you know, the movie is two hours. It's an hour and 57 minutes, which I never knew until I was going to watch it and saw that the runtime was an hour and 57 minutes. And that kind of shook me because from what I remember, Cars is a good movie and I've never felt like it was two hours. So for me to realize it's two hours, I feel like is also a nod to the editor that it doesn't super feel like two hours. I don't know if there's a scene that I would say, mm, this is really unnecessary. Maybe the tractor tipping scene with Mater, but that is cute bonding between Lightning and Mater that helps grow Lightning's attachment to these people in Radiator Springs. So I don't know. I think um, the edit is really decent, especially using that whole like opening again, like that, so good. So in the wild, I talked about needle drops not feeling appropriate. This is how it's done. Right away in the beginning, you get Cheryl Crow's Real Gone, which is a freaking bob. Just the starting it. Amazing. So after he's spoken to himself in the blackness, obviously, and the racing is starting, it really helps open the film with a lot of energy and a lot of fun with the racing and everything. And you feel really like, oh man, we're thrown into it. And then obviously we have Rascal Flatts' Life is a Highway, iconic. You have John Mayer. And then you've got like Route 66 finally comes in there somewhere. You got a lot of great needle drops that are used appropriately and effectively to set up the kind of story and like fun, speed ridden uh, film we're gonna have. And then in tandem with that, the actual score is also very well done. Randy Newman, can't really go wrong with him with Pixar. Um, but I did just wanna say like, we just had an animated movie that tried to have all these like modern day needle drops that didn't super work with it and then we come over here to cars where they started right away with cheryl close real gone which just okay i'm along for the ride it's appropriate it feels right in this moment and then the rest of the needle drops felt right as well so that's how it's done in my opinion okay i want to start with two lines that made me laugh out loud one right at the beginning when Lightning is doing like his little speech to himself and he says something about like he hasn't had breakfast and then he goes Oh, yeah, brekkie could be good for me. I wasn't I had no memory or maybe I just never paid attention or hadn't seen the beginning of this movie in a really long time and I've only seen like the middle bits um, But him saying brekkie could be good for me took me out. I don't know why it took me out I just thought it was so funny and then um, the other line that like made me laugh out loud is such a throwaway off line, I feel like, but Mater leans in to Lightning and goes, by the way, you owe me $32,000 in legal fees, <laughs> which like that is an adult joke. Like no, like no kid is gonna, like they might, not no kid. Some kids will understand that he just like asked for a lot of money for nothing basically, but <laughs> um, that's an adult joke in the movie that isn't sexual or inappropriate that will make an adult go <laughs> because it killed me because I definitely like never noticed that joke when I was younger and or didn't understand it when I was younger because that took me out. I thought that was so funny. Um, other things that were so great as part of the story. I thought it was a great big start. I thought they jumped right into the story really well. Um, I thought they also did a really great job setting him up as unlikable, but not so unlikable you couldn't pull him back into being likable. Like they really did a great job setting him up as someone that was like, oh, you're really cocky. Maybe you need to be knocked down a few pegs or humbled or something, but you're not so far gone like Chick. He was the worst, <laughs> I hate him. Um, you know, they did things like, I'll stay up with you. And then like with uh, his truck driver, and then he sleeps like so rude. Um, Mater's best friend comment almost got me when he was like, I made, I knew I made the right choice in choosing you as my best friend. Ugh. And then my favorite part of the plot, I think, is when Sally gives Lightning the choice without giving him the choice. 
she fills his gas tank up all the way and everyone's like, yo, what are you doing? He's gonna make a break for it. And she goes, no, 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 I trust him. Like we're gonna go for a drive. And you see him visually. You don't have to hear him say anything. You don't have to be in his internal monologue. You see her finish filling up his gas tank all the way. You see him pull out of the gas station and look the one way that will be him like escaping and getting to where he want has wanted to go the whole time. And you see him look at Sally, who is like, let's go for a drive. She sees something in him, she trusts him. And like, she's giving him this opportunity to make the choice, prove to us that you're the crap hole that we think you are, or prove to us that you can do better. And I think that that is so essential to this story to keep Lightning as an active character. Because you know, he's in this town stuck, you know, fixing the road, whatever else, because he's been roped into it because he's, you know, not the best. And he tore up the road and all this kind of stuff. So it almost starts to make him just like, he's only here because he has to be, but he's doing something to try. But they needed something to keep him active and making choices. And like, just before he's probably fully like, no, I love everyone in this town. I love this town. She gives him the choice. And it is so good. And then he chooses Sally, obviously. And they go on that ride and it just like cements his feelings for Sally and cements his feelings for the town, really. And it's just, ugh. That's my favorite part of the story is that she gives him the choice. That it, oh, that's the piece. The sound in this movie is actually spectacular. The sound of the racing, the sound of the cars, every just brick a brack car sound is perfect. So believable, so incredible. And I couldn't not bring it up and point it out because just from the very beginning with all the racing sounds and everything, their attention to detail with the different sounds that cars make, the different sounds of like a stadium full of people watching cars, but now those characters are cars. Everything, so good. Favorite part, when Doc comes over the like radio in the last race, oh, it gives me the chills every time. It makes me emotional, it's so good. My least favorite part, probably when Lightning assumed that Sally was like there for him because she was a Porsche. Oh, that scene is so cringy in the like courtroom. Oh, it makes me so uncomfortable. I absolutely recommend. I would absolutely watch it again. Come on now, it's Cars, it's a classic. Um, specific moments, Redneck Hill, right at the beginning, hilarious. The fact that they animated um, the cars from other countries with like different styles of animation, for instance, the Japanese car had anime eyes. I thought that was really clever and really funny. Jay Limo, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, like governor car, um, all the other Pixar movies now in car form at the end, I also thought was great. Uh, and then like the dream sequences for Dinoco changing. I loved that. Uh, it's all just really good. Other f like things that knocked me out. I think this movie compared to the wild again did fart jokes correctly. So I keep trying to be like, you know, fart jokes can be funny, but they're like, there's a line and then there's a place where they get like kind of tacky and gross. This movie, I think, had one fart joke or two fart jokes, and they both were great. They both made me laugh. They were good. The other things that made me laugh were when Lightning said, better than a Ferrari, and Luigi went, no. <laughs> Took me out, so good. And then Mater, <laughs> when asked by a reporter if Lightning was being held captive, Everyone was like, no, no, he's not a captive. And like, our Mater's like, no, he wasn't captive. But I don't want to brag or nothing, but I was in charge of hunting him down if he tried to escape. Oh my God, that took me out. I thought it was so funny. Um, otherwise, some other things I just really love and took away from this movie um, were it's just an empty cup. That is so powerful and so important in this, you know, especially to show Lightning's growth and to also turn Doc's words on him to be like a beautiful lesson also. Like Doc said, it's just an empty cup in like a very like 
angry place and lightning when he's giving it up i mean he's a rookie he knows he's got lots of years down the line where he can just you know race and um potentially try to win again but he takes that and he turns it into it's just an empty cup it's not more important than the years of hard work you've done to get you to finish this race like it's just the king i'm talking about when he crashes at the end um that is so powerful to take Doc's, like, it's just an empty cup. Like, who cares about the Piston Cup? Like, yeah, he was coming from an angry place, but also there is a point to that. Like, it's not about the trophy, so to speak. It's about, like, yeah, okay, if you win, that is amazing because you're the best and you all your hard work means you, like, did it or whatever. But it's just so powerful. The lesson in that is, ugh. Some old-timer told me, it's just an empty cup. Like, it's just so, so good Ugh. and then the <laughs> at the end when chick is standing on the um winner's like stage or whatever and they just hurl the cup at him and he's like oh hey <laughs> the confetti on top of it kills me every time because that is genuinely like that's the flip where everyone's like we don't care about the winner because someone did such a beautiful thing for the king who was like you know the winner for so long and everything so I just, ah, uh, that kills me every time. But this is fabulous. This movie is very good. It's a great lesson. It's a really good, humbling, human story, even though it's Cars. Um, and I think it's beautiful. I think it's really well done. That is everything I have for Cars. Go give it a watch if you haven't seen it, for sure. And then if you haven't seen it in a while, go give it a watch again. It's a good one. I liked watching it now as an adult, all the way through, sitting down focused, because I've definitely seen it in pieces since I saw it when I was a kid multiple times. Um, that's everything I have, so my final rating will be nine cars out of 10. Our total movie count is. Believe it or not, Parent, Death, Toll, and Crack Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with Movie I'm Watching When, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find out what Movie I'm Watching When. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. We got a tier starting at just $1 where you get every video a week early and a coupon code for merch. Tears above that, you get daily trivia, monthly podcasts, weekly, random videos live in free my mind right now. <laughs> um, you can get free merch on tiers, higher monthly postcards, on um, private vlogs, all that kind of good stuff. So go check it out. Buy merch. Merch is great. Merch is grand. This is kind of the main squeeze here. So buy it. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are. So you do you, and don't be chick about it also when guido just dusts the other pit crew oh so satisfying <laughs>